Hello, I'm Kevin Zettel, a technical marketing engineer at Infoblox, and today we're here to talk about Infoblox's new integration with Palo Alto Network's NextGen Firewall. First, I'll do an overview of the Palo Alto Network's NextGen Firewall integration and what it provides. Then, I'll show you some use cases for the integration. Then, I'll show you how to set everything up and then show you a working example. Finally, I'll show you where to find additional information that you might want. Now let's start with an overview. With Outbound API, we're now able to respond faster to network changes with the help of Infoblox's ecosystem license. Using Palo Alto Network's NextGen Firewall, admin can now automate DNS security with the ability to stop attacks immediately without intervention and maximizing ROI for both Palo Alto Network's NextGen Firewall and Infoblox. Currently, there are many devices that join and leave the network on a regular basis, and companies are investing into tools designed to address this issue and to address different security threats. However, traditional firewalls have a lack of easy and timely access to network changes that have already been provisioned, but not deployed. Also, over 90% of malware uses DNS to carry out its campaigns. Also, due to quantity of indicators and DNS targeted attacks, DNS is a gap that traditional tools don't effectively secure. Also, there's a lacking ability to share event data between platforms and teams. The benefit of this integration is to help with the problems by providing visibility into network changes and DNS threats with active identification of network and security issues to provide quick, necessary, and automatic responses to challenges that IT and security teams are having in return, increasing the ROI on security investments already made. Let's look at the first use case where Infoblox can add new address objects to an object list on the PAN side. Here, an admin creates a host or reservation where a new DHCP lease is obtained. In return, this causes the ecosystem templates to be triggered, sending information to PAN with information about the host, reservation, or DHCP lease that was just created. Finally, the host is added to an address group object which you can use to create custom policies for. Let's see the integration in action. Here, I'm going to create a host on the IP 10.120.252.184 called test.demo.com. When I hit refresh, you can see that the sync extensible attribute is updated with a timestamp when the information was synced on the PAN side. When I head over to the PAN side and hit refresh, we can see the address with the name test.demo.com was added to the Infoblox host allow list. Let's look at another use case. Here, a user tries to make a DNS request to a domain that is not allowed. Next, the DNS request is blocked by Infoblox. Infoblox's ecosystem templates are then triggered, sending information about the user to PAN. Finally, the IP address is added to the address group object, which you can use to create custom policies for. Now let's see that in action. Here, I'm making a simple dig request to example.com, which emulates a DNS request that a user can make. And here, you can see that an NX domain was handed out by the Infoblox appliance with the information in the additional section of the return field. Then, if we were to go to Infoblox's side, we can see that the extensible attributes were updated for the IP of the host who made the bad request. When I head over to the PAN side and hit refresh, we can see the IP of the host was added to the Infoblox host deny list. Now let's see how to set everything up. First, you want to go to community.infoblox.com and download the templates for the Palo Alto Network's next-gen firewall integration. Second, you want to set up the Infoblox grid for the integration. To do this, add some extensible attributes, then add the templates, add the endpoints, and add the notifications. Finally, you will want to set up the policies and lists on the PAN side. For a final note, you will need to purchase and download Infoblox's ecosystem threadwide license in order to activate the integration's capabilities. Now I'll be showing you how to set everything up on Palo Alto Network's NextGen Firewall and Infoblox. First, on the PAN side, you will want to go to Devices, Setup, General Settings, and hit the gear icon on the top right of the panel and make sure that the multi-virtual system's capabilities is selected. Next, go to Objects, Addresses, and create a dummy address so you can create an address group. 
In this case, I created an address 10.0.0.0/32. Next, go to Objects, Address Groups, and create two lists to add your addresses to from the Infobox appliance, and take note of the names that you give them. The default list names for this integration are iBlocks Host Allow and iBlocks Host Deny. Then, go to Policies, Security, and create policies that you desire to use the address groups that you add addresses to. In this demo, I've created two default policies called iBlocks Allow Host and iBlocks Deny Host that allow and block the address depending on the list they are in. Now I'll be showing you how to set everything up on Infoblox's side. First, you want to go to Administration, Extensible Attributes, and here you want to create four extensible attributes. This includes Palo Alto Asset Sync, which serves as a toggle to turn on or off the sync for asset events. Palo Alto Asset Sync That, which updates with the timestamp on an asset event. Palo Alto Security Sync, which serves as a toggle to turn on or off the sync for security events. Palo Alto Security Sync That, which is an update with a timestamp for a security event. Next, you want to go to Grid Ecosystem Templates, and here you want to add five templates for the Palo Alto integration that can be found on the Infoblox community website. These include the Palo Alto Security, Palo Alto Assets, Palo Alto Login, Palo Alto Logout, and Palo Alto Session Templates. Here you can see that the templates are just a simple JSON file with some simple logic that you can manipulate to do different things. Now back on Infoblox's side, you want to go to Grid Ecosystem Outbound Endpoint. And here you want to add an endpoint. Under the General tab, you want to add the URI of the Palo Alto Network's next-gen firewall instance you are sending the information to, as well as add the name and vendor of the endpoint. Also, you need to add the username and password to the Palo Alto Network's next-gen firewall integration, then add the Infoblox's grid's username and password for the WAPI credentials. Next, you can add a validation, however, for demo purposes, I'm not going to use one. And here, I'm using a current grid master. However, for production, it is best practice to use the Gridmaster candidate. In the Session Management tab, I have the log level set to debug for demo purposes. However, for production, it is best practice to set the log level to M4 or higher. Then, when the session template has been selected, the parameters attached to that session template will be loaded. And here is where you can change which list you want to send the addresses to on the PAN side. Finally, for extensible attributes, we have none. Next, you want to go to Notification and Add Notifications for the events. And here you can decide what type of events you want to have trigger the ecosystem templates. A notification is the way we connect the template and the endpoint to the grid using some simple rules. Under the General tab, you want to create a name for the notification and select the name of the targeted endpoint that you are using. In this case, I'm using the Palo Alto endpoint that I just showed. Then, under the Rules tab, you can set the rules you want to have trigger the template. In this case, DNS RPZ events with a rule name that contains local.rpz will trigger the template. Under RPZ and ADP events, you have an additional tab called deduplication. Here, you want to enable RPZ event deduplication to avoid triggering the template for the same event more than once. For demo purposes, I'm not going to be activating deduplication. Under the Templates tab, you can decide which templates you want to have triggered when an event that matches the rule occurs. Here you'll see that once it is selected, that the instance variables that are attached to the template are shown. And here's where you can decide what to set the instance variables to. In this case, we don't have any instance variables. Now let's see the integration in action. Here, I'm showing you that there is no host added to the Infoblox appliance, and there are no addresses added to the PAN side. Then, I'm going to be adding an IPv4 reservation with the IP of 10, 120, 252, 183. And when I hit refresh, you'll see that the extensible attribute will be updated. Then, on the PAN side, you can see that the IP was added to the Infoblox host allow list when I hit refresh. Now I'm going to add an IPv4 host with the name test.demo.com and an IP 10.120.252.184. And again, when I hit refresh, you'll see that the extensible attribute will be updated.
then on the pan side, you can see that the test.demo.com was added to the Infoblox host allow list when I hit refresh. Now let's see how the security events work. Here, I'm making a simple dig request to the Infoblox grid with a domain name that will be blocked. A dig command is just emulating a DNS request that could be made by a user. Here we can see Annex Domain was handed out by an Infoblox appliance with the information in the additional section of the return field. On the Infoblox side, if we were to hit refresh, we can see that the extensible attributes were updated for the IP of the host who made the bad request. Here we can see that the extensible attributes Palo Alto Security Sync DAT was updated. Then on the PAN side, after hitting refresh, we see that the IP of the user who made the bad request was added to the Infoblox host deny list. Finally, the Palo Alto Network's next-gen firewall integration doesn't just support adding addresses, but also supports deletion of addresses. Here, on the NIOS appliance, I will delete the host test.demo.com with IP 10, 120, 252.213. When I head back to the PAN site, we see that the IP 10, 120, 252.213 was removed when I hit refresh. If you can take away one thing from this video, is that with Outbound API, we're now able to respond faster to network changes with the help of Infoblox's ecosystem license. Using Palo Alto Network's next-gen firewall, admin can now automate DNS security with the ability to stop attacks immediately without intervention and maximizing ROI on both Infoblox and Palo Alto Network's next-gen firewall. Well, thank you for watching. All documentation related to the Infoblox and Palo Alto Network's next-gen firewall integration can be found on the Infoblox community website. If you have any other concerns or questions, you can find me or any of the other experts at Infoblox at the Infoblox community website. Thank you for your time and have a great rest of your day.